Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. I'm so happy to be bringing you today my worst books of 2023. Just a couple disclaimers right here at the top, right on the outset. Um, I have a disclaimer for viewers and I also have a disclaimer for authors. I'm going to really need you to open your ears and take this in. Because if I'm reading comments or I'm seeing comments online and you didn't listen to the disclaimer that's laid out in the first 20 seconds, like I really don't know what to tell you. You're just dumb. I am going to be mean in this video. So if you are the type of viewer who does not like negative, mean, ranty content, do not watch it. I don't need your view. I don't need your AdSense. Please leave. I don't want to fucking deal with you. If you're not that type of girly, get out. And don't comment about how this is mean. Because I'm literally telling you, I'm acknowledging right now, I'm being mean. Okay? Leave. Now the rest of us here, hopefully you want to hear me ranting about shitty books. However, I'm going to tell another piece of you that are left to leave. And that is, if you are an author watching this video, especially if I'm going to talk about one of your books. Get out. I don't want to see you in my comments. I don't want to read your comments on Facebook. I don't want you to be a little bitch ass boy because you can't understand that a woman has an opinion. Please leave. Please get out of here. You do not belong in reviewer spaces and this video is not for you. If you're still going to be here and refuse to get out, here's the thing. Don't get mad about it because all reviews are valid and I make these videos so people don't spend their very hard earned coins on your shitty books. If you can't handle me saying that, if your little fifis are getting hurt, close this tab. Really just exit. Open up your Headspace app and start a meditation. Open up your BetterHelp app and like book a session. Like I don't know what to tell you, but you don't belong here. And my final disclaimer is you cannot get mad at me for anything I say in this video because I am perfect. I am perfect in every single way, actually, so you cannot get mad at me. <laughs> so with that out of the way, I have 20 books to rant about today and I'm already feeling fired up, okay? I had a venti, caramel macchiato, and I'm ready to rant. Let's start out nice and easy. Let's not even get into anything that's gonna have me like shaking with rage at the outset. Let's just ease in, okay? The first book I'm gonna talk about is a romance and it sucked, unfortunately. It was one of the first books that I read in 2023 and it was just not a great start to the year, okay? And that is The Rewinds by Alison Wynne Scotch. Nothing happened in this book. Please tell me why this was pitched as a like magical realism, time travel, whirlwind, second chance romance that takes place on New Year's Eve and really like none of that happens. I feel cheated, I feel lied to because none of that actually came to fruition. There was just like a lot of old college memories and a lot of like putting puzzle pieces together to like get to the why even though we knew the what that already happened so it felt a little bit pointless. It wouldn't have been pointless if there was effective character development and emotional intelligence imbued into the pieces of this book but unfortunately it was so boring, it was so flat, it was so bad that that did not happen. So I do not recommend that you pick up the rewind, especially not if you are intrigued by the cover and the blurb because it's a lie. Now, I do just want to say, although I am actively not recommending these books to you and I'm telling you they were a waste of my time and you shouldn't read it, um, that doesn't mean I literally have any power over you. So guess what? You're human with free will. You can close out of this tab, open up a tab on Amazon and order all 20 of these books. And guess what? I can't stop you. I'm never gonna know about it and my life won't be affected. So you getting mad at me telling you not to read this book, it's really just hurting you. Um, anyway, moving on. Let's talk about Geneva. Shall we discuss Geneva? Oh, Geneva, 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 Geneva. This is the one and only author that made um, two spots on my top 20 worst of the year. 
which is a little horrifying for me because I have previously given her books five stars and 4.5 stars. I just don't know what happened this year, but me and Geneva were not vibing. The first Geneva book that got one star from me was You Shouldn't Have Come Here, which is pitched as a thriller, but it's actually a weird, uncomfortable romance as we follow a woman who shows up to an Airbnb and slowly falls for the proprietor, even though he is displaying literally every red flag a man could possibly give you. This is honestly just a Colleen Hoover romance that is pitched as a thriller. <laughs> Um, Miss Colleen had to catch a stray right there because there is every red flag. This man is insane. And I know that the tension was supposed to be like, is he a serial killer? Is she falling for a serial killer? But really, I was just overcome with being bored with this woman being an idiot. Like, she had no complex thoughts in her little pea brain. And this man was viscerally hateable. Like, he was so easy to hate and not in the fun way that, like, inspires feminine rage in a way that's like, how is this man existing? He's such a caricature that I can't even believe it. I am so much more horrified by male villains that feel like real and play on that psychological element. And this guy just felt like an evil villain who was gonna go monologue about hating women. Like I can't deal with this book. It was horrifying. I've seen it on multiple booktubers, worst books of the year list, and I think we're all on the same page there. However, I was the only fucking idiot booktuber that read that piece of garbage and then was like, let me pick up another one. Let me give her another chance. So I read her other release from this year, which is hashtag crime time and this was supposed to be like a finlay donovan-esque cozy mystery but it actually just ended up being one of the most irritating reading experiences i've ever had in my life i already like really went in on geneva for that last book and i actually have a 10 minute rant about this book in a previous thriller vlog if you want to hear my like in-depth rantings about this book and how absolutely shit it is you can watch that vlog I will link it up above and down below. But y'all, when I tell you this book was bad, like I don't often say there's nothing redeeming about a book, but this one, like if I could give it less than one star, I would. You know what? I might go change my story graph rating to 0.25 because I think crime time is a crime. Okay, I'm gonna get into some extreme horror. Authors, extreme horror baddies, viewing this content right now. I wanna remind you of the disclaimers. I wanna remind you that I'm perfect, okay? So, when I talk about these books, if you gonna talk about it on your Facebook page, know that you're just giving me airtime and I'm living in your head rent free because I don't give a fuck about you. And I certainly don't give a fuck about this book. Hmm, Talia 2. Please don't talk to me about Talia 2. This book is the encapsulation of like, the weirdness of the extreme horror genre that I'm constantly complaining about. Like, I read the first Talia and it was pretty good, okay? It was fine. It wasn't like amazing. I think I gave it like three, 3.5 out of five stars. It was interesting. It's about a woman named Talia who is a serial killer and also a sex worker. She makes adult content, but um, she makes very specific fetish content that would really fit into the extreme horror genre, if you know what I mean. Like, we're talking about dark, 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 dark things. Um, things that are illegal. She works for an underground little ring, if you know what I'm talking about. And because of the success of the first Talia book, of course, extreme horror authors always fucking do this thing where if they have one book that really pops off, they write a shitty sequel and it always reads like a cash grab. It always reads so rushed. There's always one million typos and it always ends up on my worst books of the fucking year. When will y'all stop doing this? I don't know. When will I stop reading them? I also don't know. In Talia 2, Halls of Blood, we have Talia having a career change and she starts to work at a school um yeah you can imagine how that goes there's like weird discussions around minors which i always believe that there's a line like if you don't think there's a line i don't know look in the mirror and see what that says about you <laughs> 
I always think to everything there's a line um, because I'm a human with empathy in my soul. I don't think this book crossed the line, but I do think it approached it in a way that wasn't effective. Like if you're gonna toe the line in some way, make it actually effective, well done, like don't misspell a fucking word. Um, and this book did not do that. Also, I would like to go through, if anyone has the Kindle version of this, please search um, boobs, breasts, tits, chest, and let's have a final count of how many times this male author references to his main female character who is driving the story solely by her anatomy. Because I feel that it came up so many times that it was distracting. It actually took me out of the story and that is not oh yeah, misogyny is a real thing in real life, so extreme horror others are talking about it and like providing commentary and representation. No, you just are a man who likes tits and you're fucking gross. So stop writing. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna get so many people so mad. And you know what? It doesn't affect me. So the only person mad is you. Daniel, have fun with that. Run with it. But you know, the extreme horror boys are not the only people I'm gonna pick on. I will also turn on my very own fellow woman. Thriller girlies, I don't love to drag you through the mud, but for this one, I have to because the writing retreat by Julia Bartz was an actual crime. I don't know how this is ending up on so many people's best of the year. And like, I see all my friends giving this four and five stars. Just know if you're doing that, like I am side-eyeing you because what the fuck? This thriller was a total and complete mess. It's supposed to be this isolated snowy murder mystery about all these women locked up writing novels for a month. They're just gonna write a novel in a month. It's a competition. One of them's gonna win out and you're supposed to like feel the tension, like people getting picked off one by one and the competition's getting so high stakes. No, it was not that. It was so boring and meandering for the first half. And then the second half took this weird ass turn, completely turned the plot on its head and not in a good way. There were so many plot holes. It was so fucking ridiculous and stupid. The characters in this book were hateable, like so easily hateable and not in a way that's like, ooh, I love reading about like a crazy unhinged woman. No, they were just annoying and insufferable in like a just a way that made me want to bang my head against a wall. It was not fun, insufferable. It was, I actually want to crawl through the pages and give you a therapy session right now kind of <laughs> insufferable because the women in this book, they're all bad and they all just like genuinely need help. It's not like caricature of a bad character and it's fun to like follow this villain. It's not like that. It's like y'all all actually need help. The main character of this book is anxious and people pleasing to a point where I wanted to shake her. I cannot deal with this main character. If this main character, if I met her, she was a person in real life, I don't think I could be around her for more than two seconds. She was constantly playing the victim. She was constantly not seeing how her own emotional patterns were affecting the people around her and the way it was affecting her. Like, I just cannot read from characters who are so painfully unaware. This gave me the same feeling that I got when I was reading You Shouldn't Have Come Here. And both of those two girls were just like oblivious idiots. I know women exist in this world that are oblivious idiots please just read matt shaw's facebook comments and you can get to know a few of them but but i don't like to see women portrayed in this way that's like i'm just unaware like why are we doing that women are so much more complex than that and the people reading this book i feel like are just fine with this type of character no not me i can't deal with it anymore get it out of here this next one is just kind of embarrassing and that is the prisoner by ba paris you know what when there's typos and stuff in extreme horror or like an indie published book i'm like Okay, it was probably a self-editing situation. I can forgive you for like two misspelled words. But when a traditionally published thriller from a massive publishing house has a character name incorrect on the blurb, 
that's when I have a little bit of an issue. It's just giving lazy and it's giving embarrassing. This plot went absolutely nowhere. There were so many holes in it and I couldn't even get into the parts of the book that were enjoyable because of the ridiculous nature of what was going on. It wasn't even fun ridiculous. It was just ridiculous ridiculous. Like nothing made sense. None of the motivations tracked. There were way too many characters that got so confused. I'm convinced this author must have been in some kind of stupor while writing this book. It's like she went to sleep every night, had amnesia and forgot what she was writing and then continued to write as if she was just like in denial about knowing where her story was going. Like none of this connected. Every chapter was like, wait, but didn't that just, the plot holes were unforgivable. And I'm sorry, I, I wanna hold the author accountable for like the shittiness of the plot, but also like this is a traditionally published, widely distributed thriller. Some kind of editor should have caught this. I don't know how this like slipped through the cracks, but it was horrible. Next up, we're gonna get back into extreme horror. And unfortunately, I did not like this book. I did not like this book. And it's sad because I've liked almost everything else that I've read from this author. This is like a pretty consistent four or five star author for me. Um, but Christopher Triana's They All Died Screaming. <laughs> oh my God. This book, I don't know what happened to Christopher Triana. I think maybe he was like held at gunpoint when he was writing this book because it did not feel like his other books. It, it just like took like a hard left turn. It, it felt like someone was like, Right bad, right bad. And he was just like, okay, because I don't know how someone who wrote Gone to See the River Man and Full Brutal wrote this book. Like it is such a departure from what I normally see from him. The characters were so shallow. The plot was so all over the place. We're supposed to be following this pandemic situation. It's kind of like apocalyptic and it's just going off the rails. And the disease that is being spread is this condition where you just start screaming and you can't stop. And that is a phenomenal concept. That concept sounds to me like Christopher Triana. Like that is crazy. And it talked about the different ways that it could kill people. Like if you just start screaming and you're eating and you start choking, you choke to death. If you start screaming and you're not able to sleep and you die from like going crazy uh, from insomnia. If you start screaming, your throat is so ragged that you just start bleeding from the throat. You choke on your own blood. Like there's so much that can be done in an extreme horror context with this book. But instead of leaning into the really wonderful plot plot idea. He did this like dual timeline with two converging paths of characters that didn't quite really make sense and I was struggling to understand the motivation for and then again the execution just really wasn't great. Like I said the characters were shallow. There was like weirdness for the sake of it being weird. Like there was really no point to it and it wasn't weird in a way that's like oh hee hee that's kind of fun. It was weird in a way that's like oh like what the fuck? What the fuck? And I do understand that that is probably the intention. You know, extreme horror genre does sometimes just exist to make you say, what the fuck, what the fuck? But here, it didn't click with me. And you know what? I'm allowed to have preferences and this did not fit into my preferences. Let's talk about romance again. Under One Roof by Allie Hazelwood. This is a crime. This is another case of this main female character actually made me want to bang my head against a window until it cracked and shattered. Like I could not actually function reading this book because I had to pause multiple times. This was a like hundred and something page novella. Supposed to be just like a cute quirky light romance. And tell me why I had to pause multiple times to like deep breathe because I hated this main character so much. The male character got me through the romance because I actually did like him. and I thought he had interesting development throughout the story, but this girl was so pick me it was actually i i couldn't deal with it like it makes me nauseous i want to throw up thinking about how pick me she is she's like i don't know like i'm just so small like i can't even take up space because i'm just so small i'm so tiny i'm, I'm just a little, little baby and oh my god like i'm just so active like i'm just such a runner i just have to run and i know that might be like a turn off for some men because i'm not really girly like that what the fuck what the fuck? You're a thin little exercise girly and you're gonna sit here and tell me you think that's a turn off? Please wake up. Do you not understand like how the world works and privilege? You don't get that? Okay, got it, got it. She also was a Disney adult and was just like 
chronically annoying. <laughs> like she was horrifying. If I, I think I said this in my wrap up when I was talking about this, if I met this girl in real life, I would never get through a single conversation with her. As soon as she brought up Dumbo, it would be over. Okay, my camera just died in the middle of me speaking about that book. So I'm gonna take that as a sign. We're done talking about Under One Roof. <laughs> I don't need to waste one more second on it. We know this girly was gonna end up on this list. Okay, this next one, I feel like it was very predictable. This author like always ends up on my worst of the year. Why do I keep reading from her? Because her premises sound amazing, okay? Her premises sound amazing, but the execution. Y'all know, Natasha Preston, The Island. Don't fuck with me, Natasha. Don't bring me my favorite trope on a silver platter and then not come through. This was supposed to be a murder mystery that takes place on an exclusive invite only amusement park island with a bunch of vapid influencers and they were all just going to turn on each other and backstab and there was going to be drama and of course i love an amusement park slasher that's like notoriously one of my favorite things um tell me why it was so fucking boring tell me why almost all the kills took place off page and were so boring like you have so much to work with on a island with an amusement park and it was just giving stabbing like please please stop. The cliffhanger ending, I want to launch myself off a cliff. The YA writing style, it's just, it's, I like YA sometimes, but this, I can't get into it. It is so viscerally YA to the point where it's like, oh my god, please stop. It's giving Wattpad. Y'all know my beef. I'm not going to dwell on it. It wasn't good. And we have another amusement park thriller. This one though, was more atrocious. I gave The Island 1.5. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I gave it 1.5 out of five stars. This one was a one, just a one. I couldn't give it more than that. And that is Hyde by Kirsten White. If you have a cast of 12 characters, you know they're gonna be hard to differentiate for like any reader, especially if you're putting them in a fast paced slasher book with not a lot of character development to differentiate these characters. So why the fuck? Would you name two characters the same name intentionally? Why you would do that it is, it, it, I'm glitching. It's a mystery to me. It, it eludes me. There were just so many dumb decisions like that made in the construction of this book that is unforgivable. And the end had me rolling my eyes into oblivion. You're gonna tell me that this is a bullshit, no thoughts, head empty amusement park slasher the entire way through. And then at the end, you wanna try to bring out some commentary that's half baked and giving like, what a 14 year old posts on Twitter when they think they're woke. Like, please give me a fucking break. This is not, we live in a society. This is a fun little slasher. So stick to your lane. The next book I want to talk about is The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden, which actually read like a fun book, but unfortunately it is allegedly not original content. And allegedly this is plagiarized. And allegedly it is a ripoff of one of my favorite books of all time. And allegedly Frieda McFadden is a stupid little asshole. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say about that. Do not read from her. Do your research. There are so many people talking about this. You can watch my entire vlog where I like dive into the Reddit threads and the lore and the Facebook comments that Frida tries to get deleted. Yeah, I know what you're doing, Frida. I literally feel visceral hate when I see this book on the shelves in like a Barnes and Noble or a Target. Like she should not be profiting off this story in my personal opinion. Let's visit something a little bit more benign for a second, just to cool down, get it together. The Prom Queen by R.L. Stein. Mr. Stein, we can do better than this. I feel like if you picked this up and you had a negative preconceived notion about Fear Street, thinking it's like childish and dumb and nothing, and then you read this, you would be like, oh yeah, that checks out. When really Fear Street books are amazing, I love them. I collect vintage Fear Street and I absolutely love the nostalgia of it. I think they can genuinely be really fun, really well done novels. But this, you're giving yourself a bad name, Mr. Stein. I don't recommend this. I'm glad that I have it for my collection. It's a first edition, first printing vintage copy and I will be keeping it because I want the whole series. But if you're reading them, if you're not just a collector, you can skip this one. Next up we have She Started It by Sean Gilbert. This was another case of a thriller that was supposed to be just like fun, entertaining, insufferable rich people all getting together on an island for a bachelorette party and then people get 
picked off one by one. It didn't read in that like fun, unlikable character way. It read in a way where the characters were just so viscerally annoying that I could not get through it. I did end up finishing this book because I was reading it for a vlog and I always try to finish the books that I read for vlogs. I don't know why, it's just like a weird thing in my head. You know, you can critique me for that and say that maybe I shouldn't do that and I should DNF more, but here's the thing, that's just a part of my anxiety and I'm gonna fucking do it. I ended up pushing myself to get through this and really just not liking it the whole entire time. It's not that deep really, there's nothing much to say other than I just didn't really like it. Uh, the characters were insufferable. Next up we have The Drift by CJ Tudor. I don't think I have heard of another thriller this year getting this many negative reviews. Like I believe all of my friends on Storygraph have given this one star, which is kind of insane. Like at least with some of these books, I know some of y'all are standing these top 20 worst books that I'm giving you and I love that for you. Please don't let my opinion sway yours. Like, I can't take away your life and your opinions. As I always say, I am just a girl. I have no real power here. I am just speaking to a camera in my room. You like whatever you like and I'm happy for you. But this, it seems that no one will be fighting for the drift in the comments. And if you're a drift stan, please rise up and make your voice heard. I will pin your comment. If you gave the drift five stars, comment down below and I will pin you because <laughs> I, I don't know that that's possible. I don't think that's gonna happen. And don't lie about it, okay? We're gonna operate on the honor system here. Please be truthful. The Drift is about these three survival situations that are all simultaneously happening at the same time. And we're supposed to be switching back and forth between these three high stakes situations that all are converging in this bigger horror story. First of all, I don't like the direction that this book was taken into like the bigger overall story that I'm referencing. I'm not going to spoil it, but I thought it was stupid. But beyond that, the three individual stories were so similar, like they weren't different enough to tell them apart. So it just read as really confusing. And like the high stakes atmosphere was immediately punctured when I had to stop, pause and be confused trying to figure out which plot line I was in. Also, each survival scenario had like six to eight people in it. So we're following a cast of like fucking 18 to 24 people. It was way too many to keep track of and I didn't. Halfway through, I was like, I'm just gonna take it for what it is. I'm not gonna try to remember who these people are because if I did, it would take me actually eight years to read this book. I did not have a deep understanding of the plot. I will be totally honest about that. And I think it's the book's fault. I don't think it's my fault. <laughs> so I gave it one star. Next up, let's discuss Broken Dolls by McKay Watson, a fellow booktuber. I have a lot of respect for McKay. Um, I really liked his debut. However, Broken Dolls was really painful for me to get through. Not only because obviously he's a colleague of mine in the space uh, of the internet and I wanted to really like his book, but also because the tone deafness was a little too deafening. I respect extreme horror that goes the extra mile and McKay certainly does that. He writes some of the most horrifying boundary breaking things I've ever read and in the genre that is a feat. That is an accomplishment. However, I think you have to do that in a way that doesn't harm people. And I'm not saying don't go to an offensive place. I'm not saying don't go to a horrifying place because that is what the genre is about. I'm talking about the unawareness where you're not writing something with intention to horrify, but you're writing something and lacking the intention that a certain population of people deserve, whether that is any oppressed group, you know, women in particular in Broken Dolls. Um, the main character really suffered from a lack of development. She could have been this really dynamic person, but she didn't feel realistic at all. She lacked a lot of depth and there were some just like blatantly misogynistic things that occurred in the course of the novel. Again, these were not intentional to horrify. These read as unaware. 
I spoke about it in a wrap up and I was really disappointed about it. I'm still really disappointed about it. I'm kind of grappling with if I want to read the follow up because I've heard much, much better things about Broken Dolls Deliverance. So I may get into that, but again, I don't want to, I don't want to give a negative review to McKay. I really don't. So y'all know that I'm real for including this in here because I don't, I just, I'm going to be honest. I don't want it to be here, but I have to give you my top 20 worst books and that's in it for me. So I'm sorry, but here here it is. And I think McKay can take criticism and really grow and I hope that that shows in the follow-up. If I get around to reading it, I will let you guys know. Next up we have Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. This romance, nothing happened. Nothing happened. On the back, so much was said to occur. Like it was so much, I, every time I talked about this in a video, whether it was like a most anticipated video, a haul, a TBR, whatever, I was like reading the back with a magnifying glass. Like how is all of this gonna go on in this book? It's about a girl and she has this like relationship with her mother, but her mother passed away. So she's dealing with the grief and her mother also left her a summer camp, Airbnb, like bed and breakfast type of in place that was like every establishment you could ever possibly own. Okay, he, she left her an inn and she's trying to do the inn and then there's this guy who shows up at the inn and the guy's a person from her past and they have this like thing from the past at the camp at the inn and there's lore about that and we're having flashbacks about that. And then they're also redeveloping this relationship in real time, but then there was this conflict. So we're working through the conflict and the like hate to love elements, but they used to be friends. So it's like friends to enemies to lovers again. And then of course we have to develop the romance and then we have to develop each character on their own. I was like, damn, this book is gonna be jam packed with content. So then why was I falling? falling asleep reading it. It was so boring. And I didn't really give this a bad rating because I think it's fine. Like it's really fine. It didn't do anything egregious, but I just think if you have that much that you are covering and it is that boring, it's qualified to be in the worst books of the year. Let's talk of another thriller and that is Mothered by Zoya Stage. Please give me a break with this one. Please give me a break with this one. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. The main character in this book, we are basically just like grappling with the difficult relationship she's had over the course of time with her mother. And I thought it was gonna be really great, like attachment speak and like generational trauma rep and things like that. Especially when tensions rise, when they have to move in together during the pandemic. But it was not that. It was so like weird and gaslighty. The mental health rep was like not great. And our main character, she just had no empathy at all whatsoever. And I don't think people who are traumatized lack empathy. I think they're allowed to be hurt and to call out the people that hurt them, but to kind of write this character who's dealing with very difficult things and write them as a person that just lacks any and all awareness, empathy, and understanding is kind of a disservice to the people that have been through that. I'm not saying that it's not accurate or that person doesn't exist somewhere out there, but I'm saying that I don't think it's a great choice and it also doesn't really ingratiate people to the main character that's driving the force of the story. I didn't like it. It was two star. You know, again, there's, this is nothing like absolutely egregious. There were many things that I didn't like about it, but I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend that at all. And we have another thriller. That is Woman of the Year by Darcy Bell. I forgot the entirety of this book a week after I read it. It was that forgettable. I remember the reading experience being like just fine. Like I just thought no thoughts while I was reading this. If you want to dissociate, <laughs> maybe read this book because I don't remember a, a single thing, not a thing. It all flew out of my brain immediately. It was supposed to be a I'm coming up from your past and bitch I'm gonna snatch your life kind of situation with rich people drama and all that good stuff that I like but it just had no substance at all. Nothing defining about the characters and the plot wasn't too exciting. Like I do remember having like some kind of oh hey that was a pretty good twist Darcy Bell feelings in the moment but it didn't stick with me in any meaningful way at all like to the point where I struggle to remember the specifics of anything that happened in this book and if you're that forgettable I just don't have time for you I got over 200 books unread on my shelves I do not need to be reading from you all right 
this is probably my last chance that I have to piss some extreme horror boy off. So hold on to your panties, Aaron Beauregard, because we are going to talk about yellow. Yellow was bad. <laughs> it was bad. It was poorly written. Really poorly written. The writing style is just not something that I really believe clicks with anyone. Like, I, Aaron Beauregard stands rise in the comments, and I know you will. And here's the thing, I know you will. And what does that say about you? I don't know. Could be something good, could be something bad, could be something in between, could be all of the above. Um, but I know you're gonna rise up. So I'm expecting it. I do want to hear from you. What do you like about this writing style? Because to me, the constant grammatical errors, the constant run on sentences, and the overuse of literary devices grates my nerves. It does not allow me to enjoy the story, even if the story is good, even if the gore is crazy, even if the character development is effective. I can't stay with it for more than two seconds and enjoy it because I'm being taken out of the story by the shitty fucking writing. If I read one more piece of alliteration, I'm going to scream. That was all I could think of as I was reading it. If I read one more sentence with back to back to back alliteration, I was gonna launch myself off a goddamn cliff. I can't do it anymore. I'm at my wits end with the alliteration. I don't know whatever happened in the extreme horror genre. I don't know if all these boys just like all found out at the same time that alliteration is a device that exists, but they are really using it for all it's fucking worth. Like a especially Aaron Beauregard and especially in this book. It was so distracting. Every sentence back to back used alliteration. Are you Dr. Seuss? Like I can't deal with it. And the similes and metaphors. Yes, if they add something to the story, please deepen your writing with the use of those literary devices. But if they are just thrown in every other sentence for no fucking reason, and it's the weirdest simile I've literally ever heard of that doesn't really make sense, I can't read your book. I can't do it. And on top of that, this story was just not good. It's supposed to be an underdog, like rooting for this underdog to take revenge on the people who hurt him vibe. And I love that. I love that like cathartic experience of like, yeah, fuck you bullies. Like I love that. And this man was just like down bad. He got badly attacked, like brutally attacked in his place of business this with his wife and so he's getting some balls growing some balls getting some revenge on the people who perpetrated these crimes i'm thinking i'm gonna root for this man unfortunately i could not because i didn't know anything about him other than his ranting and raving about i'm gonna fuck up these bullies i'm gonna fuck up these dudes i'm gonna fuck them up i'm gonna fuck them up, I'm gonna fuck them up. it's like is that your whole personality because um I want to hear some more and there was no depth at all whatsoever so no matter how intense and crazy the gore was which y'all know i love that um i couldn't get into it and a lot of people like to say oh Haley, just don't read extreme horror if you can't handle it like if you can't take the heat get out of the kitchen it's not the intensity of the gore that i have a problem with i want that i like that open your ears and hear me it's the fact that the writing is bad and if you're getting upset right now remember to go back to the 30 second mark of this video where i said i'm gonna be mean and don't say oh my god she's being so mean girl i know these people need to hear it there are people out there that want to hear it and if you're one of my mean girlies <laughs> hi i hope you're having fun and if you are an author still watching at this point all i can say is take this and grow from it but I don't really think that growth is going to happen because this I've read many 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 books from this author at, at this point and I really do not see it ever working out so I'm gonna just stop reading from this author. Y'all have been asking me to read Playground. Y'all it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. You would have to like pay me. Like somebody would have to Venmo me for my pain and suffering and it would not be like a low price. I would have to like set a, a, a kind of high price to go through a reading experience of Playground at this point because I've had so many negative experiences. Reading this man's books, it is just so painful. It's not because of the gore, it's because of the shitty writing. Moving on. The last book, the finale to round out my top 20 worst books of 2023 was unfortunately, I'm ashamed to say, a pick for my book club. I hate when this happens. I 
okay when this happens because then we all show up to the freaking live show to discuss the book and it's like hey hey we all hate it here <laughs> like what's going on and if it's something like the prisoner that i talked about earlier which was also a book club pick and it was just so hilariously embarrassingly bad that we could have a fun time with it that's one thing but this discussion was just boring as hell because this book was boring as hell and that is just another missing person by jillian McAllister. this author wrote one of my best books of last year i don't know what happened with this one the plot holes were insane. I found it very hard to get through this book because it was boring. That was like the main thing about it is I was like, I didn't want to pick it up. If I wasn't reading it for my book club, I would not continue to pick it up. However, I did and I couldn't help but notice as I returned to it over and over the glaring plot holes. Like, I don't understand how you don't plot out a thriller and understand that you need that plot to be tight. You cannot have holes when you're introducing these kind of twists, but they were glaringly obvious and there was also just like some weirdness in here like talk of the main character like taking off her shoes she was barefoot a lot and it was a lot of like descriptions of feet i don't know like if that's a thing that stands out to me about your thriller after a couple months of not thinking about it for a while that i don't know what that says that's a something though <laughs> it was just weird riddled with plot holes really really boring i don't recommend it and i feel like I feel kind of bad because I feel like I did recommend it because I recommended this author's last year release, Wrong Place, Wrong Time. I love that book. So I was like, oh my god, I'm anticipating her next book. Like, let's all read it. And then it was shit, unfortunately. So that'll do it for my worst books of this year. 2023 was actually a really good reading year for me. I found a lot of new favorites, but this was just the worst of the worst. And honestly, there's not that many more books besides these 20 that I read this year that I didn't like. Um, most of the other books that I read, and I read over 175 books this year, most of the other ones were four, 3.5, 4.5, and even five stars. I had over 40 five star books this year, which is just absolutely incredible. But these were the only ones that like really did not hit for me. So I hope if you wanted to hear some negativity and ranting on this wonderful Christmas Eve, I delivered that for you. You're welcome. Here's your gift. It is this. And if you got triggered or activated in any way by this video, I'm sorry, but there was a warning at the top. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know down below what was your worst book of 2023. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. I know there's gonna be a lot of fucking dislikes, so y'all, if you like it, go ahead and show me your love with a like. And if you want more of this and also more like positive, actually like giving intelligence content, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to go to therapy, especially after this, and read a book this week. And I will see you guys tomorrow in my my last video of 2023 which is my top 23 best books of 2023 i cannot wait to rave about them and share them with you guys so i will see you in that video bye